my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be attempting the pizza balloon. Now I first learned about this from friends Rob and Corinne over at Threadbanger. They made, it's basically a pizza and it has a top and a bottom crust. You insert a straw and you inflate it and then you've got your pizza toppings inside, you know, sauce, cheese, whatever you want, and then you seal it, and so you've got this bubble of dough, and then you bake the whole thing, and then of course the crust hardens and gets golden, and then you cut it open, and then you've got your pizza inside, and you've got like a double crust, so it's like a pie meets a balloon meets pizza. So it has a beautiful presentation, and when I saw it, I knew I had to try it for myself. So I already mentioned that I was inspired by Threadbanger's video, but I also watched a Scrum Daily Umptious video and the Sauna's Kitchen. I will put their links to their videos down in the description if you are interested. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, we're going to make our dough. Now this dough needs to be really supple and pliant. It needs to rest a lot because the gluten, which is the protein that develops when you knead dough, needs to be really relaxed so the dough can stretch when you inflate it. So the pizza dough recipe I'm going to be using today comes out of this book. It's called The Bread Baker's Apprentice by Peter Reinhardt and I'm going to be using his pizza Napolitana recipes. Pretty straightforward. Very, very simple dough. Consists of yeast, flour, water, optional oil, and lots and lots of time. So in the bowl of my stand mixer, I'm going to add four and a half cups of all-purpose flour or 20.25 ounces of chilled flour. Peter Reinhardt says specifically that this flour should be cold as well as your water. Something about improving the texture of the crust. All right, so I listen and follow directions, okay? All right, in the flour. Oh, I also have the dough hook attachment on my mixer. I'm just gonna use my hands because this is my kitchen. One and three quarters teaspoon of kosher salt. One teaspoon of instant yeast. Incidentally, if you don't have a stand mixer, you can certainly do this in a bowl. You're just going to be stirring and kneading this for quite a while. I'm just going to save myself some muscle and use this mixer here. So this recipe also says you can use a quarter cup of olive oil. If you're using a high gluten flour, then that's when you would use the olive oil. Since I'm using all purpose and it tends to be a little bit tender, Peter Reinhardt says that I can skip the olive oil, which is what I'm going to do because olive oil apparently isn't in the true Napolitana style pizza dough. Let's just stick with that, right? Plus I don't have high gluten flour, so I'm using AP, and AP is tender, and I don't need to add oil, that's what Peter said, so all right, I'm gonna go back to that, okay? <laughs> now I'm gonna add one three quarters cup of cold water. So I'm gonna pause that and scrape down the sides. So we're gonna knead this with the dough hook for five to seven minutes until the dough does not stick to the sides of the bowl. Then we know it is ready. Now, this dough is not ready to be used yet. The gluten is way too tight and you will not be able to stretch the dough out properly. So we must let this rest overnight or up to three days. You can also portion this out and put it in your freezer and you can store it there for up to three months. I love to do that. I love to have pre-made dough, delicious dough in my freezer and then the night before I'm gonna have pizza, I just put it in my refrigerator and the next day it's ready for me to use. Love that. Now using my pastry cutter, I'm going to divide this into six pieces. And tuck it under and shape it into a ball. And use flour as needed to keep it from sticking to your hands. Now I'm going to take a little bit of olive oil and put it in a bowl. I'm going to take my ball of dough and kind of swish it in the olive oil. Then I'm going to place it into a zippered bag and place it in the freezer. And then I can have pizza dough whenever I want. This will keep the dough from sticking to the bag. So I have some other dough that I made earlier that has rusted, and now we're going to roll it out. Basically, we're gonna create two crusts. This is going to become a pizza pie in the most literal sense. Using my fist a little bit to give it a bit of a stretch. I don't want this to be too thin. So that's one side, I'm gonna let that rest a little bit, and then I'm going to do the other side. Got a baking pan here lined with some parchment. That's probably about eight or nine inches in diameter. All right, let's get to the fun part, which is building the pizza. Put a little bit of pizza sauce on here. We want to keep the perimeter pizza sauce free because the top will not stick 
if we have pizza sauce there. I like to make a cheese kind of sandwich. I put a very light coating first and then I put more cheese on top. And then I'm gonna add a few pepperoni. Onions, I love onions on my pizza. Mushrooms, particularly with pepperoni and bell peppers. Top it with a little bit more cheese. And take a little bit of water and moisten the perimeter. This will ensure a good seal. Then we're gonna take our lid, carefully place it on top. Don't forget our straw. I'm using a boba straw. Place that in there, put a little pressure, push that down. So basically what I'm doing is going around and bringing up the bottom crust over the top and pushing it down. Is ensuring I have a good seal between the two layers. Now we inflate. Here we go. That looks pretty amazing. Okay. Seal that up. Look at that. Yes! That was awesome! Beautiful. Now I'm going to pop this into a 400 degree oven and cook it for about 15 minutes until it's nice and golden brown. Yes! Okay, so my pizza balloon is ready. Wait till you see this. Oh my goodness! Look! Isn't it amazing? It turned out so beautifully! I am so happy about this. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, this thing is a behemoth. and It's got to be like nine inches tall. I love it! Nothing more satisfying than when a recipe comes together. Look at that. I'm just gonna cut this open. Ah, oh, it smells so good. So I know Corinne flambéed hers, but I really don't want to flambé my pizza. Okay, look at all the steam that's coming out. Hello, pizza. My beautiful pizza bowl, and there's my pizza inside. Now that I've actually done this, I would recommend not inflating it as much as I did because the pizza itself creates steam and it will self inflate. I actually turned down the temperature while this was baking because I didn't want this crust to get too golden too fast because I knew I had to cook the rest of the pizza dough as well. So when you do this, don't inflate yours as much because it will inflate itself. But if you want something epically huge and just gorgeous like that, then inflate like I did, okay? <laughs> All right, let's taste this pizza. I like my pizza with a little bit of chili flakes on top. And I'm gonna not put chili flakes on this side because my boy's gonna have some of this for lunch. Yes, yes, oh yes. I'm trying not to burn the roof of my mouth. All right. Hit the lucky balls. Ooh. Mm. Oh, that's so hot. And that is a pretty tasty pizza. And that's a pretty tasty pizza. I love all the combination of flavors in there. It's the classic combination, which is my favorite. But what I don't like is the texture of the crust. Usually when I make a pizza, I like to put my cast iron skillets in my oven and preheat them and get them really scorching hot around 425 degrees. And then I put my pizza dough and I slide it right on there using my pizza peel. And that really hot temperature of the skillet makes for a really crispy, crusty, lovely pizza crust. But that didn't happen here because I used a cold baking sheet that wasn't preheated. Also, the crust was a little bit thicker than I normally make it. This is my first time making a pizza balloon and I wanted to ensure that it would inflate, so I didn't want to stretch the dough out too thinly. But I think if I were to try to tempt this again, I think I would try to slide the parchment paper onto a preheated stone or preheated cast iron skillet to get the bottom a little bit more crispy. 
I didn't want to risk failure of this balloon experiment, so I just followed directions as I was told and did it on a baking sheet, as was demonstrated in the videos I watched. Now, let's try the shell. This looks great. It kind of reminds me of something like lavash or some kind of thin bread or even pita, but listen, it's crackly crunchy. Aha! Yum. Mm hmm Delicious. I think this would be really fun at a dinner party. You could bring it out with a whole theater of the inflated pizza. And then afterwards, everyone can kind of nosh on this if you had some cheese or some sliced meats and eat this along with the pizza. I think that'd be really fun. Also, a side salad's in order, too. Mm hmm I actually prefer the lid of the pizza balloon more than the bottom of the pizza balloon, but I think that just has to do with some recipe tweaking and just a little bit of experimentation in terms of just technique and process. But delicious and theatrical. <laughs> so there you have it, the very dramatic pizza balloon. It's actually pretty easy to make. You just have to make sure you seal the edges of your two pieces of dough really well and do not overinflate, and you should have success. If you make this, please share your results with me on social media. I want to see your beautiful balloons. I also want to see your failures, because I'm sure those are pretty fun too. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. You can follow me on social media. Yeah, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye! <laughs>